welcome to the members of the organizing committee iapt dsma 2023 myself dr shiva uchan working at government physics degree college department of physics shahpur district yadgir uh, karnataka i have completed uh, my phd uh, on the topic a study on electrical and microstructural properties of some metallic films in the year 2021 i have completed my post graduation from gulbarga university uh, msc in the field of solid state physics um i i have also completed ba in the subjects physics and mathematics bsc physics chemistry and mathematics so my professional skills are that is uh, i have 10 years of uh, ng experience publications totally 12 international uh, conference presentations abroad 11 papers presented at uh, different national or international conferences or workshop or symposium that is 42 participation national or international conferences seminars or workshops 34 and international conferences abroad that is as invited speaker uh, i have been selected for two and delivered also international conferences abroad paper presentation namely i have presented uh, at the following countries uh, that is bulgaria hungary portugal china ukraine vietnam italy poland israel and taiwan i am i am a member of four academic scientific bodies that is life member of iapt kanpur and life member of indian vikram society mumbai life member of karnataka rajya vigyana parishad life member of karnataka physics association i have filed uh, patents Uh, that is uh, at the indian patent office uh, chennai so the patent first which i have filed is it is on the topic a method for aiding resistivity and energy gap measurement of semiconductors and the second patent is a method and system of accurately calculating the thermal conductivity of a partially matched specimen so title of my today's talk is that is uh, on the topic natural resources so uh, natural resources it is divided into renewable as well as non renewable so first we shall know what is meant by the natural resources so resources that occur in our nature are known as the natural resources these cannot be produced by our mankind examples sunlight minerals so now we shall classify the uh, uh, natural resources natural resources can be classified into two categories there is the renewable and non renewable resources so we shall know what are renewable resources resources that can be replenished naturally in the course of time are called renewable resources example air water sunlight wind and we shall know what are non renewable resources resources that exist in limited supply and cannot be replaced if they are used up are called non renewable resources example oil natural gas coal and uh, nuclear fuels so uh, the renewable uh, resources means there is solar energy and wind energy geothermal energy hydrogen energy uh, biomass so on and the non renewable uh, energy they are fossil fuels energy such as uh, natural gas nuclear coal and so on Uh, we shall uh, divide the renewable sources that is examples are solar energy wind energy hydropower geothermal energy solar energy uh, nowadays uh, uh, we are uh, if a new house is to be constructed the government asked for the solar energy uh, equipment that should be installed on uh, every house so nowadays solar panels solar cookers uh, solar water heaters they are becoming popularly used by the common public so solar energy is radiant energy and heat from the sun harnessed using a range of ever evolving technologies such as solar photovoltaic cells the sun is a powerful source of energy that provides the earth with as much as energy every hour as we collectively use in a year worldwide energy from the sun is harnessed in two ways that is active solar involves capturing and redistributing sunlight through the use of solar panels pumps or solar fans which generate power usually on a large scale second one there is passive solar works to reduce the amount of energy traditionally used to power a location such as buildings or houses an example is building a house uh, in the natural direction of sunlight to trap heat 
wind and say nowadays the uh, winds have become very much popular in the hill areas or the mountainous uh, areas now in karnataka we can see the windmills in places of belgao chitradurga mandya where where the mountains are available so wind energy first we shall know what we mean by the wind energy the electrical energy that is obtained from harnessing the wind with windmills or wind turbines is called wind energy winds are caused by the uneven heating of the atmosphere with the sun the irregularities of the earth surface and rotation of the earth wind turbines convert the kinetic energy in the wind into mechanical power large wind farm consists of hundreds of individual wind turbines which are connected to the electric power transmission network hydropower so nowadays you can see the krs dam and many so, so on water dams which are being constructed by the state government as well as the central government in current we are uh, we come to know about the kalini uh, water dam and the krs so in that we can uh, produce abundant amount of uh, uh, water energy it is converted into electrical energy with the help of turbines so hydropower is the energy derived from the falling water or running water falling water is channeled through water turbines the pressure of the flowing water on turbine blades rotates a shaft and drives an electrical generator converting the motion into electrical energy but hydroelectric power doesn't necessarily require a large dam some hydroelectric power plants just use a small canal to channel the river water through a turbine and the geothermal energy nowadays uh, we are also uh, coming to know about the geothermal energy so geothermal energy is a thermal energy generated and stored in the earth thermal energy is the energy that determines the temperature of matter the geothermal energy of the earth's crust originates from the horizon formation of the planet that's 20% and from gradient decay of minerals that is 80% available so the geothermal gradient which is the difference in temperature between the core of the planet and its surface drives a continuous conduction of thermal energy in the form of heat from the core to the surface resources of geothermal energy range from the shallow ground to hot water and hot rock found a few miles beneath the earth's surface and down even deeper to the extremely high temperatures of mountain rock called magma so we shall see the pros and cons of the renewable resources so pros of the solar energy it saves money a lot of money can be saved as the money paid in the form of power bill will be reduced green energy pollution produced by burning of fossil fuels like petrol cutting trees for timber can be decreased to a great extent and the cons mostly mythical upfront cost some people hold off on purchasing solar panels because they imagine that they can't afford the initial expense but the amount spent on installing solar uh, panels can be gained in a few years as they save on electricity produced from generation sources such as coal wood etc maintenance home owners unfamiliar with solar technology sometimes fear that complex repairs will be needed in fact solar panels have no moving parts so there is no wear and tear rain is generally sufficient to keep the panels free from dust and grain and we shall know the about the wind energy its pros wind energy is a green energy source and does not cause pollution the potential of wind power is enormous it is about nearly 20 times more than that Uh, what the entire human population needs the operation cost associated with wind power are low and we shall see its uh, reverse side there is cons wind is a fluctuating intermittent source of energy and is not suited to meet the base load energy demand unless some form of energy storage is utilized example batteries pumped hydro the manufacturing and installation of wind turbines requires heavy upfront investments both in commercial and residential applications so wind turbines can be a threat to wildlife example birds bats and so on and we shall see about the hydropower its pros hydro electricity is very reliable energy there are very little fluctuations in terms of the electric power that is being by the plants unless a different output is desired adjusting water flow and output of electricity is easy at times where power consumption is low water flow is reduced and the maximum levels are being conserved for times when the power consumption is high and its uh, reverse side that is cons hydroelectric power plants may affect fish is a complex interaction between numerous 
physical and biological factors. Building power plants in general is expensive. Electricity generation and energy prices are directly related to how much water is available. A drought could potentially affect this. And we shall see about the geothermal energy process. No fee is required for uh, no mining or transportation, not subject to the same fluctuations as solar or wind. Smallest land footprint of any major power source, virtually limitless supply. And the reverse side of the geothermal energy is the prime sites are often far from population centers. Losses due to long distance transmission of electricity, sulfur dioxide and silica are emitted. Now we shall have a glance over the non-renewable resources. So uh, what are the non-renewable resources? In that comes oil, natural gas, coal, nuclear resources. And oil which is uh, used as fuel in uh, vehicles, four wheelers and cars, aeroplanes and so on. Oil. First we shall know what you, uh, uh, about the details about the oil. Liquid petroleum or crude oil is only non-renewable resource in fluid form. A fossil fuel that is being used up faster than new reserves are discovered. The oil supply may only last through the middle of this century. Industrial nations in the US far in, far in the lead are the biggest consumers of crude oil. Gasoline, heating oil and diesel fuel are the primary users of the resource. Although manufacturers utilize oil as the base for such products as plastics and industrial chemicals. Natural gas. Natural gas which is available in the seas or oceans. So natural gas is a fossil fuel formed when layers of buried plants, gases and animals are exposed to intense heat and pressure over thousands of years. The energy that the plants originally operate from the sun is stored in the form of chemical bonds in natural gas. It is primarily composed of methane but contains ethane, propane and butane as well. Once drillers extract natural gas processing plants remove the propane and butane for use as liquidified petroleum gas. There is LPG, a household and industrial fuel. According to the current usage statistics and the volume of world reserves, the supply of natural gas should last another century. And the coal, which is uh, used in uh, Indian uh, railways for the production of uh, energy, is available in different parts of India. Coal, which is a primary resource of energy in India, is a product of millions of years of pressure on organic origin matter from plants buried underground. It is a combustible black or brownish black sedimentary rock, usually occurring in rock strata in layers or veins called coal beds or coal sink. Anthracite, the purest form of coal, contains about 94 to 95 percent of carbon. At the power plant, coal is commonly burned in a boiler to produce steam. The steam is run through a turbine to generate electricity. The global supply of coal, uh, given the current rate at which it is used, should last at least two more centuries. So now the nuclear energy, which we are uh, seeing the plants at, uh, in Tamil Nadu and different parts of India. Nuclear power or nuclear energy. It is the use of exothermic nuclear processes to generate useful heat and electricity. The term includes nuclear fusion, nuclear decay, and nuclear fusion. Presently, the nuclear fusion of elements in the actinide series of the periodic table produce the vast majority of nuclear energy in the direct service of humankind. In nuclear fusion, neutrons smash into the nucleus of uranium atoms and release energy in the form of heat. Water is converted to steam by this heat and it is used to drive the turbines. Nuclear fusion power switches, excluding the contribution of naval nuclear fusion reactors, provided about 5.7 percent of the world's energy and 13 percent of the world's electricity in the year 2012. So steps to be taken for conservation of natural resources. It should be we should use various resources only when needed. Avoid the wastes of resources. Avoid the use of material from wildlife sources. Use energy efficient electrical appliances. Use pressure cooker for cooking which is here 75% of the LPG used in homes. 
old vehicles should not be used as they are less fuel efficient and also cause pollution. Utilize renewable energy sources as much as possible. Increase use of solar cooker, pump, etc. We should use recycled waste and wastewater for agriculture purposes. So, my research work. So, we shall discuss about the research work. I have built several electronic gadgets which depict the fundamental principles of physics under the category of low cost equipment. Uh, I am very much keen in the fabrication and functioning of uh, these gadgets at undergraduate and postgraduate levels. My research problem converges on experiments on the materials which are useful in the preparation of simple solar cells. The effect of various deposition parameters on the electrical and optical properties will have to be studied. Apart from this, the influence of swift heavy ion beam irradiation on these films will be undertaken at the nuclear science center new delhi so the swift high, uh, heavy ion beam is expected to modify the film by, by mixing due to thermal spiking or electronically by column explosion which can be optimized for better material properties various measurements throw light on their structure and the nature of the films this research means our research will culminate by evolving battery alloys or materials with optimal parameters for the preparation of thin film solar cells in order to increase the energy conversion ratio. The other part of my research is the synthesis of bulk and ceramic thin film for fabrication of devices. They are small in size. The performance efficiency of bulk devices manufactured is rather low and erratic, and hence thin film ceramic devices and their behavior under various conditions or parameters is being undertaken in the research where in huge industrial applications can be later defined based on the results obtained. The importance of my research work is to perform a systematic study of electrical resistivity, optical conductivity and the structural morphology of ceramic samples which throw light on transport carriers, their nature, their concentration, mobility, activation energy, band gap, and optical transmittance, etc. Uh, so these studies will have been fabricating and developing high conducting or non-conducting materials useful for several solid state devices. The effects of composition, structure, and environment on physical properties in terms of atomic, ionic, and electronic behavior is the prime aim of the present research problem. Apart from this, the effect of deposition parameters on the physical properties will also be dealt in detail. So the, the main objective of my research is to carry out a systemic study on the impact that thickness has on optical properties such as the band gap, absorption, coefficient, optical density, among others, for selenium thin films, chromium, tin, silver, nickel, and so on. The understanding of the band gap and its influence on the film thickness is of paramount importance for the acquisition of the desired electrical characterization of semiconductor films. So the materials which I am using is the ultra purity, that is 99.99 percentage of selenium was deposited on glass substrate. So during deposition, the glass substrate on its respective support was rotated at a constant speed to obtain a uniform coating. So at last year, the results we will come to know about the XRT findings indicate that uh, selenium, it is amorphous in nature. It is found that the band gap of the optical band takes a descending shape that is from 2.3 to 2 electron volt with decreasing film thickness in the interval of 200 to 1000 nanometer. So the band gap of the band obeys the inverse square law. So finally, we come to our conclusion from my research. That is, we have successfully generated selenium thin films through the deep recovery wavelength limit by thermal evaporation. The optical density varies directly with the thickness of the film. The absorption portions were located in the interval that is 0.524 into 10 to 7 per meter. The AFM results confirm uh, that the nanometric size of selenium increases with increasing thickness. Both green bodies and sub granule regions are clearly visible in some micrographs that is uh, 0.3 to 2 electron volt with increasing film thickness in the range 200 to 1000 nanometer. The band gap of the band obeys the inverse square law with respect to thickness. So finally, we have successfully generated selenium thin films below the deep wavelength limit by vacuum thermal evaporation method. The optical density varies directly with the thickness of the film. The absorption coefficients were located in the interval. Okay, 0.524. So 
the AFM results confirm that the nanometer size of selenium increases with the increase in pigments. Both grain boundaries and subgranular uh, regions are clearly visible in the same micro graphs. With increasing film thickness, it varies shown into how the nanometer. The band gap of the band obeys the inverse corolla with respect to thickness. So, finally, we have successfully grown uh, generated to selenium in grains. So, so uh, let us discuss about my uh, skills. That is, I have presented two uh, research papers orally and uh, at the international conference that is at Varna, Bulgaria. That is the uh, name of the uh, paper. That is, uh, it is, uh, it has been adjusted as an excellent paper by the Yes, and refer, uh, referee reports of the 20th Jubilee International School on Condensed Matter Physics and Applications of Advanced and Multinational Functional Materials held at Varna, Bulgaria. That is uh, in the month of 3rd September to September 7th, 2018. It, it has been adjudged as the excellent paper by the selection committee. So about my uh, achievement, that is, uh, my work that is, uh, has been awarded as outstanding for oral presentation entitled Base pressure effect on electrical properties of chromium nanofilms at the International Advanced Study Conference on Condensed Matter and Low Temperature Physics held during 6 to 12 June 2021, Kharkiv, Ukraine. So, uh, my uh, okay, next, uh, I have been adjusted at the second place in the International Conference on Functional Glasses on November 13 to 14, 2022 for celebration of International Year of Glass 2022, organized by the Indian Association of Physics Teachers, IPT, Karnataka AC Dual and Institute of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineers, Kalburgi, in collaboration with Karnataka Science and Technology Academy, KSTA, and the Karnataka State Council for Science and Technology. I have filed two patents. Okay. Next, uh, my, uh, so I have been awarded as the second prize at the um, IAPT Innovation Center at, held at Maharani Lakshmi Amani College Physics Lab, that's Bengaluru, that is on low cost experiment for Foucault technique at the regional competition of innovative experiments in physics. So, under my guidance, uh, one, one of my students, that is Ramya Suresh, has been awarded the third prize in essay competition held on 24th. August 2022, in connection with the DAE Iconic Week celebration held at District Science Center, Kalvurgi, in collaboration with Nuclear Power Cooperation of India Limited, Mumbai, and Kaiga Generating Station, Uttarakhand District. So, achievements. Recently, that I have been uh, selected to participate at the uh, 2023 ICTP Winter College in Optics, Terahertz, Optics, and Photonics, that is from 6 February 2023 to 7 February 2023. Italian. And I have also delivered as an invited speaker for the third international advanced study conference on condensed matter and low temperature physics held on June 5 to 11, 2023, Kharkiv, Ukraine. And I have been also uh, been invited uh, as the speaker for the ENM 2023 to be held on 26 to 28th July at the University of Aguero, Portugal. So I have uh, handled uh, many equipments that is such as the following instruments that is uh, I have operated that is I have operated in film vacuum coating unit, electron beam gun, DK2 uh, ratio recording, perkin Elsner spectro photometer, high temperature furnace that is about 16,000 degree centigrade, transmission and scanning electron uh, microscope, stand and SEM sputtering unit. And I have also built and successfully used that is the temperature controller, liquid nitrogen clear set, liquid nitrogen level indicator, constant current source, IC regulated power supply, CBD, ECBD, and ALD, that is dry age and metrology. So, thank you to all of you for giving me an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.